the interesting things about looking at disaster is that you expect to see chaos and you expect to see panic and you expect to see the total breakdown of a social unit. Uh, and actually what you'd see is a great deal of organization within moments of incidents of social disorganization. So for example, a lot of people looked at the pictures of people running away from uh, the crumbling World Trade Center towers. And they said, oh, it's panic in the streets. It was just like a disaster movie. And we see that after every disaster. Somebody says, oh, there was panic everywhere. It was pandemonium. It was a total breakdown of society. But this is very rare, actually. What happened in the World Trade Center, take a good example, I'll follow up on my own example, is that, uh, in fact, people, if, if you want to say panic is that sense of urgency that makes you get the heck away from uh, a big threat, they didn't panic soon enough. Uh, people, instead of that sort of self-serving, self-interested behavior that you see in disaster movies, what we saw in World Trade Center Towers, in fact, was altruistic behavior. People helping perfect strangers down the stairwells, helping people who were physically challenged or disabled down the stairwells, whereas, you know, that vision of human nature that we have that says, I look out for myself first and everybody else be damned. Uh, that vision of human nature turns out to be highly stylized and it holds true only in a very, only in very special circumstances. One of the main problems that, that um, we have in the field of disaster studies and, and risk communication is that uh, many of our decision makers, uh, risk managers and people who are in some way in charge of resources for planning for disaster, one of the main problems is that they believe in that command and control model. And it's a vision of human behavior that says that when disaster comes, uh, people need to be treated like children. And so this idea that we should have command and control, usually at the point of a gun, is, is a real problem for, for disasters because for how, how we prepare for and re respond to disaster because when things when disaster comes things are out of order and no single person can put them back into order so you have to be able to be more flexible my last book has the very happy title of worst cases terror and catastrophe in the popular imagination and it, it's a very fun book in spite of this very scary title and what it's about is how it is that we look forward uh, as a society, as a group, as complex organizations, how we look forward and imagine the worst fill-in-the-blank. Airplane catastrophe, worst terrorist attack, the, the worst epidemic that, that could happen. And also how we look back into the, into the past and decide uh, that something was the worst fill-in-the-blank. I'll give you an, a, a, an interesting example. After Katrina, people said, it was the worst hurricane-related disaster in the United States. In one sense, yes, in another sense, not by a long shot. It was in the sense that a lot of New Orleans was destroyed. But it wasn't in terms of body count. That happened in, in the year 1900. A hurricane came into, uh, into Galveston, Texas, killed the, 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 the numbers are between 8,000 and 12,000 people. Mm -hmm.